Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars, some of my favourite people. And we've got two for you today. Four of the nation's most exciting food and drink startups could taste success today. They're the finalists of the Into and Virgin Startups Foodpreneur 2017. I'm delighted to say we've got one of them, James Cadbury from Love Coco, and one of the judges too, Levi Roots. Boys, how are you doing? I'm good. Not bad at all, man. It's been a really good morning seeing you know, people doing uh, something that I did terrifyingly um, some years ago. Isn't it interesting? I don't yeah. think food and restaurants have ever been more popular. We're suddenly prepared to pay over the odds for great food. Farm shops are sp- uh, springing up everywhere. And certainly, James, with things like chocolate, we'll pay if it's good. Yeah, I hope so. So we make fantastic organic chocolate and uh, we came here today to do our pitch. And it's a- You're the great, great, great grandson of John Cadbury. Firstly, how do you feel about it no longer being English? That must break your heart a bit. It makes me slightly depressed. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was really disappointing when they got taken over six years ago. Uh, but as a family, we can do anything. Our ancestors, my great-great-grandfather, he was a, a huge philanthropist. He, he gave back so much to the country in terms of you know, changing laws. He stopped, stopped people from working on the weekends, bank holidays and stuff like that. He bought a national newspaper to try and stop a war and stuff like that. So I uh, try to have a voice against the war. So, you know, they did a fantastic job. And um, being so generous, it, it meant that they, they gave it all away. And, uh, yeah, it was a shame when they got taken over. So I'm trying to, you know, make British chocolate great again with, with Love Coco. And, you know, hopefully I'm sort of, he's happy up there if he's, if he's watching down on me. And let's face it, Americans are great at a lot of things. They're not great at chocolate. It's mostly crap, isn't it? That Hershey stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's very different. It's, it's, it's strange. But when you do go to America, you do pick up a bar and uh, a lot of it is, isn't great. But uh, I've had a good experience out of America, though. When I, when I go past uh, my checkout, sorry, not checkout, but I passport, show my passport to people, they always say, oh, you missed the cream egg airman. So it's, it's, it's fun. People obviously get the cream eggs out there. So, so yeah. And it seems to me good chocolate can be very good for you. It's sort of the cheap chocolate that's filled with sugar that is not. Um, I guess by the, the, the title of your company, Love Cocoa, I mean, it, it's a big thing, isn't it, to get the right cocoa, the right amount of sugar and the mi- right amount of mix to make it the perfect chocolate bar. Yeah, absolutely. So we source ethically from, um, from Dominican Republic and, um, and also Ecuador. And uh, yeah, you're, you're right. You have to get the right balance with that. Our dark chocolate is probably our most popular chocolate, and that does have a lot less sugar than uh, a milk chocolate. And we're also going to be launching a 100% chocolate in the future, uh, probably in the next couple of months in the run-up to Christmas. And the good thing about that is that doesn't have any sugar, so it, it, it's perfect for people who want a nice little treat. Levi, I want to talk to you because you are fascinating. What are you? Are you a businessman? Are you a chef? Or are you a musician? What do you want to be defined as? Well, I don't think that I could be any of the above, actually. <laughs> I'm just still somebody who's passionate about, you know, a little bit about all three mm. and, and is still trying to find, you know, who I am and, and what's my best position in, in all three. I don't think I've got to the top of the tree yet. Caribbean food is so niche and so new and that even though it's, it's arrived 10 years ago since I sort of came on the scene. But, you know, it's, we've only just scratched the surface of what Caribbean food is really. And as an entrepreneur, I'm still very much learning from my mentor, Peter Jones, who pretty much sort of um, uh, sort of steering me in, in, in the right way of how to become a, a proper business person. I don't think 10 years of selling some sauces and other products, you, you can sort of, you know, class yourself as, as the finished product. So it's still very much learning. And again, the music, as you said, is, is still the best part of me, even though I wouldn't be able to separate, you know, all three. But I do think if you ask me what inspires me mostly, it is my guitar at home and sitting there. If you say, Levi, will you be 10 minutes? I'll probably be two hours and 10 minutes. So I'll probably take the music as the biggest inspiration of all. You see, I love that. What we saw on Dragon's Den was your passion for life, and that came through in your food. But musically, I mean, some of the people you've performed with, whether it be James Brown, Maxi Priest, or even your pal Bob Marley, what an extraordinary life and career to be around those type of people. I mean, at the absolute top of their game.
you know, as you said, Bob Marley was a big inspiration for me when I started out, and I drew a, a lot of my musical inspiration from him. So it's great that on my new album, I've managed to have him on there, my Reggae Reggae Hits album, and still, you know, gaining, um, you know, inspiration from his music now. I've been really lucky to interview great people over the years and it seems to me, especially with music and with food, whether it be a Gordon Ramsay, a Jamie Oliver or a musician like yourself, you have to live it, breathe it and it is a part of you, isn't it? I mean, you can't be trained to care about music or food. It's a passion that's from within you. Absolutely. I I do think that's so true, especially if you want something more from it. You know, with, with the music, if you want something more than just having a listen to some lyrics or some tune and enjoying yourself. I think there is more. Music can do more. It can enhance you in your own life. It it can motivate you and can inspire inspire you. So it's about all about what you're looking for and and to do with food. I think this is one of the new thing that we call the new rock and roll. I I do think food has become like that. Mm. Uh, 10, 20 years ago, we would have never seen someone like a, a Gordon Ramsay or a Jamie Oliver when I was a kid as a, as a hero. Absolutely not. We'll be looking at footballers and other, and other celebrities like that. But now, food is the new rock and roll, and, and it's great that young kids and people all over the country are, are now actually looking for themselves in business to be included as, as a food, as food business. And I think, as I said earlier, I mean, people will pay now. It's amazing how these farmers markets, great chocolate. James, it's interesting, isn't it, how when food banks are open up and down the country, we'll still spend on good food if it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's affordable luxury and, um, you know, people want to treat themselves now and again. And I think there's a general trend in, in, in food that people are, you know, eating better quality premium products, uh, but probably less less of this sort of thing. So they will rather having a, a bar of chocolate, which you might buy from a, a news agent, uh, they might, you know, now they probably go and buy once a week and have a really nice quality bar of chocolate. So that's where we sort of fit in. Tell me about your life. I mean, were you born with a silver spoon in your gob in a 37-bedroom mansion on the back of your great-great-great-granddad, who obviously has had international global success? What has your life been like? It's fascinating. No, no, no not at all. So by... Um, my grandfather was an engineer. He never worked in the in the business, um, and my father was, was a lawyer. So um, they made their own money. The the the, the Cadbury inheritance. Uh, there's probably a little bit, but not a lot. When the um, my ancestors gave the majority of away to to um, to, to different causes, so to to hospitals, to, to communities, to different charities and organisations like that. And as a family, we're still involved in quite a lot of those charities. So I've uh, been on the. Uh, been trusted by these charities where we give five um, percent of our um, so about five million pounds a year away to different charities, to sports charities, to all sorts of things. My dad's the chairman of one of those uh, charities as well. So uh, no, we definitely not had a silver spoon in our mouth, but at the same time we, you know. It's a noble thing to do. I mean, I look at your name and it seems to me like Coca-Cola own Christmas. You own Easter. It must be amazing for you to see your name everywhere. I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, a bit like Oprah, you don't need to say a second name. Cadbury just immediately has an emotional reaction with us. It's very rare that those brands become that big and that personal to so many people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the Cadbury brand is fantastic. It has been fantastic. Uh, and, you know, lots of people grew up uh, loving Cadbury's chocolate. Um, I just hope it doesn't change too much um, after, after obviously the takeover. Um, so, fingers crossed, it, it stays a good quality brand, but we shall see. Uh, but we are, we are completely different. Look, so, okay, we, we are sort of top end at the moment, and we're, we're a sort of gifty or affordable luxury um, mm. for people to eat a couple of times a week rather than an everyday snack bar, which Cadbury's might be. Let's talk about uh, Virgin Startups Foodpreneur, which is uh, 2017's effort, really, to create another Levi Roots. Um, You're competing against three other people. Um, Tell me why, A, you wanted to be part of this, and and B, what you could benefit from it. Well, I took a Virgin Startup loan to really get the business off the ground, so that shows that we wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And we we took £10,000, which we used for uh, to get the, the product together, so branding and, you know, going and meeting different... Uh, people to try and really help them take the brand off. So I always wanted to do it uh, when I when I saw it come up, and I know Virgin's startup name was involved, and especially into as well. They're, they're a great shopping centre, and uh, them together creating this opportunity for people to go and have a uh, a one week pop up in uh, in a store for, uh, in the country is fantastic, and for the winners to uh, get six weeks and mentorship was also obviously a big draw. 
Um, and, and I knew that be, being a Virgin event, it would have some great judges and uh, people involved like Levi. So that was the real main hook for, them for us to get involved. I don't think people, Levi, understand how difficult it is to get a product off the ground because the supermarkets now are such clever businesses and marketeers that you have to literally pay if you want to be on the end of an aisle, which is so important because you need to be seen. How tricky was it to get the reggae reggae sauce as well known as it is? It is a tricky business. You're absolutely right. And, and a lot of people seem to think that as, as soon as they get the business off the ground, it is plain sailing. But in order to get through to one of the top four or five supermarkets, your testicles and reserves, et cetera, it is very difficult. Um, it, literally, it's one of the most difficult things to do is, is to get to that point. For me, it was about it was about mentorship. Again, it's about what your mentor does. It, it's make that crucial call, you know, of contacts and friends of his. For me, Peter made a call to Justin King, which... He was chief of Sainsbury's at the time when I was on Dragons then. I, I think he's left now. Um, and it was a phone call to him, to, you know, to, um, to, to ask Peter to ask his mate to, to, to whether he would stock reggae reggae sauce in, in Sainsbury's. And I was, I was taken aback because I knew that normally if you did get uh, lucky enough to get Sainsbury's or Tesco to put you in their stores, you'll get 100 stores, perhaps 60 or 50. Um, but for us, it was 607 stores in, in our first go, which was a, a fantastic opportunity mm. for me to do what I've always said, that regular regular sauce could outsell Heinz tomato ketchup. And within weeks of it being on the, the, the shelves, that's exactly what happened. So, but it is down to your, your mentor to be able to make those calls. And that's why I've always said mentor, mentorship is one of the most fantastic things in business. And if, if you're out there as a body entrepreneur and you haven't got a mentor, I say get one now. Because it's an interesting story. From what I read, the BBC saw you on a market trying to flog your reggae reggae sauce and then invited you to go on Dragon's Den. So that's slightly different in itself that they saw potential in you and then you got the opportunity. I guess you need an ambassador then, somebody much bigger than yourself, which is why that program works. To be successful, it's almost impossible to do it by yourself. If you phone Tesco and say, will you put Alex Belfield's sauce on the shelf? They're going to tell me to clear off, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. But again... You have to make your own luck. There isn't any such thing as, as oh, you were lucky or, or what have you. Uh, I did 15 years of going to exhibitions wherever there was anything to do with sauces, chilies or anything like that to do with food and eat. You know, I, I would turn up with my guitar and I'd be singing my songs and hoping that someone like a, a Dragon Z would have, would have come along. And, and then, you know, the rest is easy. But I think that first part is putting yourself out there, really making sure that you know your market, you've done your market investigation and you completely have made as much friends as you can within that sector mm. that, you know, that, that you're in. And the rest is just to wait for, for that moment to arrive. Um, as I said, you're there and you've made your own luck and the next thing is somebody to come and tap you on the shoulder. And that's, that's exactly what happened to me. How hard is it once you get there? I always say this to music people when they get the first number one album. How do you get the second number one album? How easy is it to stay at the top and stay re recognizable and not be replaced by the new cool thing that's going to come in and try and steal your market? I think this is about branding now. You know, this is about the brand. I, I, I think people buy food and drink because it's a fantastic taste. But also they, they buy it because the brand has become part of become part of their lives. Make your own luck and once you get through that first door, you know, once your product is, is off and running, yeah. you know, there isn't a point where you can sit back and relax and drink that rum punch because there's always another door for you to get through. Mm. What the strength in you actually been achieving when you open that next door is it's got to be the strength about the brand mm. because people will have already known the product and now it's just the strength of whether or not, you know, they'd be willing to invest in your brand by spending, you know, one pound fifty or whatever it is that the cost of your of your product. Mm. Um, and that's what it's about. So you've got to have a really strong brand in order to to get to get your product. Um, you know, and keep producing new, new product ideas. It also seems to me that people love the person. I can't remember or name anybody else from Dragon's Den other than you. It's extraordinary how the individual can sell a product too. And I think that's your greatest asset, isn't it? In marketing, in PR, in your product. If you are it and you care about it, when we hear the word virgin, we immediately go to Richard Branson because we like him and remember him. One of the things that I, I do talk to kids when I, you know, I do, 
quite a lot of school visits and prisons and wherever there is young people. That's all I do nowadays. And one of the things that I, I, I do stress on is is about being yourself, is, is being you. Um, when I first heard about, the, the, you know, the Dragon's Den program, uh, you know, I heard that it was a show that people go on and pretend to be the, the, the sort of finished, the finished product. Uh, and I wanted to be the Rasta man from Brixton that, has, that sings songs and has a great backstory with his grandma and his source and be totally me. Mm. And nobody had ever sang on the show before, but that gave me another opportunity to express a part mm. of me that the Dragon's may not have seen if I did go on without the guitar. So I wanted to be totally me, and, and that's what I did. I, I went on, and um, I think some of the dragons were a little bit taken aback, thinking that she would be next door in X Factor and on a show about business and enterprise. Mm -hmm. Well, for, for someone like a Peter Jones, that I think that doesn't invest in the product, I think he always invests in the person. Yeah. Congratulations. You're an inspiration and you're completely authentic and wish you all the best. Thank you for judging uh, Levi Roots, the uh, Virgin Startups Foodpreneur 2017. And finally to you, James, what does this mean to you then if you win and when you find out later today whether you've got that title? Uh, it means as well to me if I have the opportunity to win. Um, we're, we've got some fantastic judges, but we've also got some other great co uh, companies who are, who are pitching. So we spent a lot of time with the Snapping Pig uh, in Derby in, in the centre there, and we, we've made friends for life. They're absolutely cracking guys. And if we don't win, you know, we've had we've done so well to get to this stage, and we will we'll support whoever wins. So fingers crossed it'll be us, but uh, you never know with these things. I guess you can't lose in a way. You got that money, you set up your company, it looks great, it's a classy brand and you're on your way whether you win the title or not. You, you've sort of been helped by these people and uh, I, I presume for that you're incredibly grateful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got a pleasure to start the blowing and everybody here is so fantastic. They're all very supportive and there's so many little events going on which really do make a big difference and it helps companies like myself. And We've got past 300 people, uh, then there was a, down to the last 16 and the last day, so to get to the final four is, is really fantastic. And fingers crossed later on. We wish everybody best. Uh, James Cadbury, uh, Rupesh Alexandra Thomas, uh, Jamie McClowski, we've got Nick Coleman and Andrew Allen all competing for this wonderful title, The Virgin Startups Foodpreneur 2017. We thank you for your time, Levi Roots and James. Really lovely to talk to you. Thank you, boys.